This is Ray's Magnetic Torque Generator. I have worked with the principle that when magnets set at right angles, there is a torque produced. I have two magnets. I'm going to set them at right angles. Two magnets set at right angles produce a torque. Let's go the other way here. Now the interesting thing was I could get a torque going but then it would lock up. I can, in fact it will just completely lock up. So my research has been over unity effects. So I knew that by having the torque it was still not over unity because it was locking up. So I had to find a way of producing a torque, but have a non-locking effect. First what I did, I wanted to verify that there was power being produced with the torquing effect. So I have a small generator here. I have the same principle. This is this. This has a north and a south. This has a north and a south. But I broke it up so I could put an insert in the center. So I could kind of work with it a little bit better and see what was going on. So now I still have two magnets. Right angles. This field is going this direction. This field is going this direction. So we bring it down. Okay, let's go the other way if we can. There we go. And you can see again, that there is power in the torquing. But there again, we're locked up. There is no gain. So I had to find a way to make a non-locking system. Okay. So, I wanted to see what would happen in this torquing principle. So, I have a pack of magnets, the field is going this way, I have my other magnet, I want the field going this direction, this one's going this direction. I'm going to bring it right through the center, it will try to turn but it can't turn because it's on the little car. But I found out something very interesting. To produce a non-locking torque, I used the side field. And this is the example again. Here's the direct. You see the forces being back and forth. Really, they're torquing, but uh, they're on this. But I didn't want a locking system. So I used this side field. There we go. 
Now you can see you have to get it just exact. If I get that side filled just right, I can get that. So what I did was I took two bars. This way it gave me something to work with. I didn't have to be so exact so it, it widened these fields out. So now they're more even. They're not so strong and erratic. So now they're, they're kind of spaced like that if you can see the fields. So now we'll bring our this field is going this way. This field is going this way. So they're at right angles. There we go. Looks like it's out in this area. Okay. So now I believed I had the answer and solution that I could have a non-locking field. I call this a go-through because it goes through the uh, locking elements like an input resistance and output uh, resistances. It has a go-through. Okay. So next came device I put together okay. hope you got that this is my my device I also found that by putting the side, this is mounted to the side. Uh, here I went to the end. I call this a, a monopole, a straight monopole. It's, it's mounted on the end of the magnet. But when it comes off to the side of the magnet, I call that a saddle monopole. It's saddled to the side and it worked just as well or better. Okay. So that's what I have here. I have my main magnet, my main power magnet. I'm going to disconnect my gearing so that everything is just floating. I mean, it just doesn't take hardly any power. So here would be my input coming in. And then here's my output. See how it spins more? But my output is more than my input. So my research is over unity events. So if I had equal, that means it would push away them as much and as hard as it would uh, going into it. So there wouldn't be any gain. But if I have very little input and then more output, then I have grounds. So I'm going to engage these gearing to my little generator. That puts enough drag that it gets rid of this. I mean, you could almost sneeze on that and move it. So I didn't want it that uh, sensitive. So just a little bit of drag created by the generator, that's fine because we're looking for input to output. So I can even go down a little bit more even and still not have, have the anything pushing away. Okay, let's go in here. 
and you come in there and it fires. You can see the LED. Okay. Coming into the gate. You can see it firing. Let's go down just a little bit more. And as long as we have more power out than power in, that's what I call the reunity event. Okay. I think I involuntarily pushed a little bit. I'll try not to do that. Bring it up here to the balance point, and then we'll let it take it off itself. There, have a nice firing, nothing pulling back. It can go around to the next cycle. There is a little bit right in there. It's because it's turning this corner. If it was straight on, it wouldn't even have that. But uh, we'll just have to live with it. So we're coming up here to the balance point. So. You can see that the input was much lower than the output. You see the firing? So if we bring it down even more, it's getting pretty close now. And uh, nothing pushing away. That's giving a nice firing now. So, this is what I call a rotary over unity event. I've had some success on linear motions, but I always had trouble with rotary. There's that little bit right in there, but compared to the out. So, that's what we're comparing input to output. Much more than what's pushing away. If it was just the same, it would start flying this direction like crazy, but it's not. It would be going this direction as much as it would be going that direction if there was no over unity event. But you can see it's not doing that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I do appreciate if you could visit my buy me a coffee. Uh, this does have a lot of potential. I've been experimenting with some other ideas, and they do show uh, promise. But uh, this is a demonstration of how the torquing works. When you have two magnets at right angles, they produce a torque. They lock up. So that's where I went. And I have a non-locking device you use side fields. So that's the uh, science behind it, as far as I could understand it. I hope you have a good day in Benning. Until next time.